So you want to know how to perfect your molds for a hey, making grills or if you're a dental student how to do it for dentistry if you're getting a dental assisting all that kind of stuff I can show you how and I know some of you are like no we want to know how to do the casting process for grills but I'm working on the video I just like my videos to be super detailed and it's a lot of information on that part so I'm making sure it's perfect before I put it out but in the meantime let me show you how to make perfect molds for your grills or you know just dental hobbies or whatever it may be all right, so we got some water. It does not have to be purified, it could be tap water, simple water. We have some impression trays. Now, the impression trays kind of range. The green ones here are interior trays and the blue ones here are full arch. They can come in a variety of colors. It's not just blue and green. Um, but the interior ones, these ones, I never really use them because even if the client just wants a front six, go for the full arch. It just makes your job easier if they decide to change their mind. Now, the trays range from one all the way to six. One, three, and five are all upper arch, and then you have two, four, and six being all lower arch. Now, normally just go with the three and four because that's the medium size, and most people can fit the medium trays, so you don't have to really waste your money getting the one, twos, and five, and sixes. Next, you got your rubber mixing bowl and spatula. The rubber bowl is just to help, you know, with the cleanup process. It makes it very, very easy. You also got gloves because you want to keep your hands fresh, not dirty with people's spit, alginate, and or putty. I'm going to show you guys how to do both. Um, if you want to buy both, buy both. Or if you want to buy alginate or putty, you'll see how I feel about both of them and while I... I decide to use alginate more than putty. Next you have labstone. Now this is labstone, dental labstone. Now you, some people use plaster of Paris. I recommend not doing that because plaster of Paris is exotherm exothermic, which means it heats up when you add water to it. You can get burns and all the other crap. Labstone, which is like, you know, dental labstone, is just like powdery and it doesn't really get exothermic or any heat reaction. So, and to me, it's a little bit more durable. So go with the labstone, don't get plaster of Paris. This is a lot more durable. Now I got here some Ziploc bags. Normally when you're on the go, or if you're just, you know, gonna pour up the models later, you wanna wrap your alginate model in like a wet paper towel and throw it in a bag. It doesn't have to be in a bag, but just at least wrap in a wet paper towel. I have the bags here just so it's easier to, you know, carry. Here, I also have some cotton rolls. Now I just use the cotton rolls to get the people with like tight lips and they don't really have big lips. People with tight lips, you can't really lift their lip up. I put these underneath their lip and then it kind of gets their lip out the way when I take the impression. Oh, and you'll need a vibrating table as well. This is important. All right, so when starting up, of course, you wanna have your gloves on. This stuff can get a little bit messy. You wanna put, it's really, I think it's one part alginate, three parts water. Now, this normally comes with like a flask or something where you can measure how much water to alginate you're putting. But honestly, I kinda just do it by eyeball and you kinda just want like a thicker consistency and not so much watery consistency. So it absorbs water pretty well, so you don't have to be too generous with the water. You just go bit by bit and you just stir it in. But you have to remember that you do have a set time when working with the alginate. So I think it's about, shoot, I think regular sets like four to five minutes. So you kind of want to make sure that you're in that time frame when mixing. Now this alginate here is kind of weird. Not all alginate kind of mixes the same for me. It kind of seems a little bit different. This one, the powder is very powdery, so it doesn't really mix too well. So you see I'm kind of working fast, right? I'm kind of like trying to mix it in there. Right now I have way too much water, so I just pour some of the water out. It's kind of that simple. So, you know, you don't want to do this over your sink because it could clog your drains. That's why I'm doing it on the side. Definitely don't do this in your sink and don't let none of this get down your sink. It's, it's not too good for it. So you see this consistency here, I was kind of thick. That's kind of what you want. Next, what I'm doing, I'm mushing it around the sides. Now, that's why I said I normally get like a bigger rubber bowl. This bowl is really small, so it's like falling out as I do it. But you mush it around the sides to pretty much get a lot of air bubbles out as much as possible. Once you do that, you wanna be focusing on the place that you're going to be making the, um, whatever the restoration it is. So you don't want too much on the back because a lot of people who have gagging reflexes, they tend to gag a lot. So just scrape off the excess and then you should be good to go. Next, you go over to your big lipped handsome brother and you're gonna go ahead and tell him, don't bite down and relax your lips. So you tell them to relax your lips so you can move their lip out the way and then you can get it over the um, tray. Afterwards, you're gonna hold the, um, you're gonna hold the tray up in the middle and tell them to put their chin down so the alginate isn't running down their throat when they feel like they're gonna gag. So see how I'm holding it here? You wanna hold it the same way just so you give it good support and it's gonna reach the gum line and you know just get perfect basically. You don't wanna push to the point where you feel the tray touching their teeth. 
if you feel the tray touching their teeth, you're doing it wrong and it's gonna mess up the teeth. So you just wanna do it up to the point where you know, it's kinda hard to explain, but you don't want the tray touching your teeth when you do this process. So I'm gonna slow this part in slow motion so I can help you guys out. Right here, you're putting in the tray, relax your lips, you move their lip out the way and you want the tray to cover all the way up to the gum line and that's how you know you're good to go. You don't have to push any further. So right there, I'm just moving his lip a little bit, trying to get it over the tray. And then right here, you're gonna tell him, bring your chin down. And then you're gonna hold the tray with that finger. And then you're just gonna support the tray. I'm not pushing when my fingers are, in, are on the tray. I'm just supporting the tray so that the tray doesn't really fall down or anything like that and mess up the impression. So remember, once that tray covers the gum line and you're pushing up, right here, watch. Boom, covers the gum line. Don't push up any further. Just make sure everything is leveled out in the back, all the way to the front. Pull the lip over the tray and then just support the tray. Bring the patient's chin down and make sure that they're not choking on the damn alginate. After you waited about two to three minutes for it to be in the patient's mouth, you're gonna go ahead and like play with the alginate a bit. Realize that it's tough and it's not really like sinking in your finger and giving give it back. And you're just gonna wiggle it out of their mouth and you know, pull down. And as you can see, your boy got the perfect gum lines all over the place. So if you can see the full teeth, you're good to go. Now I have a couple of areas that could be better, which is right here and here. And these areas could be better because if you can see it, there's a little bit of blue showing, which means that they're biting almost through the tray, which is not really good. So I should have been a little bit lighter on those parts right there, but at the end of the day, it's actually pretty decent. All right, so now using putty, it's a little bit different. We're gonna go ahead and do the lower arch on myself because I already showed you how to do the upper arch. And with the lower arch, you don't even have to worry about gagging, even if you were to use algae. So that's the cool thing about that. Sometimes you do, but most of the time you don't. Now when working with dental putty, you pretty much have a catalyst and a base. The catalyst here I have is white, the base is blue. Um, the catalyst speeds up the reaction and the base kind of like sets it up with polymers or something like that. But basically, you want to take equal parts, so one to one ratio. You basically want to just test it out here. I normally have a scoop, but I lost it, so I kind of just play it by eye. All right, next things next, you just want to get these two. I'm just speeding this up because it's pretty simple. You want to make sure you have equal parts, like I said. So you know, I put them into balls, I compare the balls, see that one's a little bit bigger take some off, reshape the ball, make sure they're both the same size, and then we're gonna get started with mixing. So when you're mixing these, you're just gonna like do it exactly how I'm doing it here. If you just try to roll it into a ball and put them together, it's not gonna mix properly. So make sure you give it a proper mix. Once the two have become one, you wanna roll into a ball and then roll it into like a little doo-doo slug, like this, and then you're gonna go ahead and place it in your tray. Even if it's the upper arch, you still wanna put it in the area where the teeth are gonna be. And then you wanna kinda of like form it and make sure that it's a little bit more than less when you're working with it. You don't want it to be too thin or it's not gonna reach the teeth properly and the gum line. All right, so now you're gonna look at it zesty, lick your lips, and then you're gonna place it in your mouth here and try to push it down up until the point where it covers the gum line once again. So see how I'm doing it here? I'm not pushing to where I'm biting all the way into it. I'm just pushing it until where it like pretty much, like I said, covers your teeth. All right, right after that, you're gonna play with it, make sure that it's tough and you know, give you some pushback and not really like taking all the give. And you're gonna wiggle it out your mouth. Now this impression is completely trash. And here's why, for one, it looks like the putty is already starting to set and that's why I'm not getting good impressions on the back of my teeth. Either way, we're gonna go ahead and pour this up and then I'm still gonna show you some other things when it comes to working in with putty. But as you can see, I have the gum lines all in front. It looks pretty good. You could probably use this impression, but I probably would take another one if I could, just because this one could be better. So you got your models, now you wanna shake out all the water. Um, it's not a huge deal if there's some water in there, but you just wanna get most of it out if there is any in there. When it comes to this lapstone mixing, I have no idea what the ratio is. I don't know if it's two to one, one to one. You can probably Google that and find an answer. Now, the way I was taught to mix alginate is a little bit different than what I'm gonna show you here. Um, I was taught to make a runny consist consistency first, then the less runny consistency, I hate that word, and then the last one's gonna be a thick consistency so that you can go in and make the base for the uh, molds. But what I'm going to do here is just make a medium to runny consistency and then a base consistency to make the mold. That word sucks. One thing about stone, it absorbs water really fast. So as you see here, like it takes the water really, really fast because the stone is very fine. So even though it looked like it was going to be equal parts, 
you see how runny that is? I have to add more stuff. I'm not gonna lie, I chose yellow because it was like like forbidden cake batter. You just want to eat it so bad. Look at it. Look at that. Well, it looked good like some cake batter. Anyway, add more stuff to get to the consistency that you want, okay? So just keep adding, mixing, add some little bit of water if you need to, make some more stone, yada yada yada. Keep going back and forth until you reach something a little bit like what I'm about to show you. Before you go ahead and feed the stone into your models, what you're gonna do is put on a vibrating table and this allows all the air bubbles to rise to the top. So you know how sometimes you see dental lab molds and they have like bubbles on them on the teeth? That's because, you know, there's air bubbles there. That consistency is good for what we're about to do. So you go ahead and place it on the vibrating table and you're supposed to start from like the left side to the right side. If you're looking at it the way I'm looking at it, how are you looking at it? from right to left and let it run through its course. You don't really want to just plop it all on top. You could, I've done it before, not a lot of bad things happen, but I was taught to let it run to the other side. All right, so next, make sure you're gonna go ahead and feed it to the other model as well. They're both runny consistencies right now. And now we're gonna to get to adding it more powder and then we're gonna mix it up until it gets a little bit thicker. And this thick consistency allows us to make like a, a bit of a base for the bottom. Now you can do these bases like way proper. They have like base formers and everything, but uh, you know, I'm not going to go ahead and invest the money for a base farmer when they do the same thing, you know, I'm not... Well, why make it look pretty when you're just going to use it to destroy it anyway, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, th see how thick this is? That's perfect. It's like, you know, like a tub of lard or something. You're going to go ahead and scoop that up how we did the adjunct earlier. You're going to place it right on top, just like that. And just go ahead and just get to working it all over, baby. You're going to go put it like that, move it around. And it's easy, it's actually better to go ahead and like wet your spatula while you do this and then just like fine it out a little bit and it kind of helps it form a lot easier but I wasn't trying to make a mess, that's the reason why I didn't do it. Once you do that, you flip it over and you let it sit. I let mine sit on a napkin because that's a little hack, it actually makes the process speed up and dry faster but, you know, you don't really got to put on a napkin, you put on whatever you want. Now all you have to do is wait for your models to dry. I actually don't know how long you want to wait. I think it's about four to six hours, but I normally just wait until the next day because I'm never really in a rush. And then I get to cracking them open and, you know, finagling them. So for your algae models, if they're dry, let them sit in the water for about five minutes and let them soften up. For your putty models, you don't got to do anything because it's putty, it doesn't really change its shape too much. So you're pretty much good to go with that. Go ahead and get your wax carving knife tool from your wax and carving setup that I told you to get last video. Or just get anything that can kind of wedge itself between the tray and your model. I knock off all the extra parts of the stone that kind of just hold the model together. And then I kind of start working it around just to make some space so I can release the model from the mold. And voila, atrocious. All the teeth came out terrible. It does not look good at all. Now, here's the reason why this happened. Now, the reason why this happened was because that right here, the teeth, if you look closely, didn't chip or break inside the mold. These are just big air bubbles where the um, stone didn't actually reach the end of the putty. So normally when you're working with the putty, you want to make sure you have a light consistency first and then pour it in there and then you can go from the medium to the other consistency. Because the putty is very, very, more, it's, it's a lot more stiff than the alginate, so it's not going to flex as much when you're first pouring it up. For the alginate, super simple. Look at that. You let it sit in there for a little while. You go ahead and wiggle it on out. Super easy. Not a lot of finagling, not a lot of bedangling. You're pretty much good to go. And also look, the teeth are perfect. Literally perfect. You know what I'm saying? The last thing I would normally do is trim up the models. So all that big gunk that's kind of blocking you from laying a nice sheet of wax down. I get a Dremel. And a Dremel is just like a little carving tool. And they have like a um, sandpaper roller in the Dremel. You just polish that all the way down. I didn't show you guys that because I felt like it was pretty simple. So you just go ahead and shave all that down. It makes a lot of dust. So do it outside or something or, you know, have like a hooded vacuum. I just do mine outside, bring the extension cord out. And then, yeah, it's pretty much how you make them. Other than that, man, that's it for this video. I have not much more to say for you guys. If you want to see me trim a model, I can show you, but it's pretty simple. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'm going to see you in the next video. Peace.